We're a family of five. Um, we've got three children. Theo, who's 11, and then twin girls, Isabella and Isadora, who are eight. We're mad about music, all of us. Um, we incorporate it in almost everything we do. For example, if we're going off on holiday, we'll check to see if we can carry a cello on board. And if we can't, we'll check to see if we can hire a cello wherever it is we're going, but the others can take the instrument on board. Music is just, it's like the lifeblood of this family. Um, when I was about three years old, I heard the Mozart horn concertos and I instantly fell in love with the French horn and I begged mummy to let me play the French horn. She said when I was about seven or eight, I could give it a go and she gave me the violin to play. I love the violin. I picked up the piano at five and I loved that too. But when I was seven, I reminded her about her promise and I took up the French horn and I still love it to this day. I play the violin and piano. And I play the cello and piano. I think I was three and a half when I started cello and piano. I'm not actually sure when I started it, I'm just guessing it's November 2017. Um, I started my violin when I was three and a half, but I'm not sure when I started the piano. I tried um, cello before I tried the violin, but I liked the violin more than cello. So, um, one just took to the cello and the other one just hero worships her sister, her older sister, wants to do everything she does. So to the violin show. that worked out perfectly for us. When I was nine years old, I picked up the viola after hearing one of Bach's cello suites. I wanted to play it on the cello, but it would ruin my ball hold on the violin. I would probably say that my favorite musician is by far the composer Bach, because um, his music is really versatile, and most of it is quite jolly. My favorite musician, um, Nicola Benedetti, because um, she won so many awards and she can, um, she's shown what you can do with um, the violin. I have joint favourite ones, like so good better. Um, definitely Sheikou Kane Mason. Maybe just the whole family. Probably because, but like, they're really good and inspirational, so you can just like learn from like watching them. This is a journey. Um, it's not something that you should just, you know, I don't think you should just pay for lessons and send off your child. I think as a parent you should be involved. If you really, really want to reap the fruits, you want your child to be able to produce beautiful music, you need to be able to create the time to practice with them or create the environment that makes it possible for them to, have, uh, to, to, to do good quality practice. The days are very, very different depending on the child and depending on the schedule. But um, one thing is consistent throughout the week, and that is the start the day with music practice, always. You practice only on the days you eat, which is every day. So the first thing in the morning when they get up, when they're still, their minds are still active and alert and fresh, they practice. And, you know, it's as, it's as natural to them as breathing. Let's just put it that we wake up like, say, first, hmm, early in the morning. I don't really know. We practice first thing in the morning, and how long it takes usually depends on what I have coming up. So if I have a concert or if I'm learning a new piece, I would spend more time on that instrument. But the other instruments wouldn't be like abandoned that day. I would still practice on them. But what, no matter what day it is, I always practice my scales and studies. It's always the same. They would start with scales and then studies and then um, review. For the, certainly for the twins, there's a lot of review. Mm -hmm. For Theo, it's more of, it depends on what's, what's going. She has quite a busy schedule. She plays in four orchestras um, and then she's got, she plays four instruments. Um, so it really, really depends. It's very, very targeted practice. It depends on what she has planned in her calendar, what's up and coming. But one thing is... Um, one thing is constant and consistent and all that, in that she practices every instrument, even if it's just the scales 
and the studies, she would do that every single day. For the piano, I have studies, two studies, one that I'm learning now and one that I've already learnt. And the one that I've learnt, I try and play at least once or twice a week so that I don't forget it. On the violin, I have a lot of pieces because I can remember it from memory. And I probably just review all the pieces in that volume, so like volume one, volume two, etc. And with the viola, I have two studies that I'm doing and three pieces that um, I have to constantly keep playing so that I don't forget. On the French horn, I have one study and two pieces that I play so that I don't forget. I notice that I'm forgetting a piece if I haven't reviewed it for, let's say, more than a week because um, my fingers um, stumble and I'm not as confident as I usually am when I play the piece. I know that I've had a good practice when I'm sounding better than when I started. Um, I know by, like, the next time I practice, which is the next day, is that I know by the quality of my sound and the, quali and the quality of, like, th um, the things I'm doing. Um, I know I, that I've had a good practice because I, um, by the next day I can hear that I've improved at that particular sort of piece of music. It's kind of as if we have a plan for like everything. Yes, there's a time for everything. In the morning, um, it's practice time. And in the evening after school is activities. So like free time, reading books, studying, homework and ensembles. The weekend is different in that on a Saturday they attend most of their music classes mm -hmm. and so we are the um, bus service, we are um, taxi service, shuttling them. They're roadies. Yeah, we're the yeah, roadies yeah, and groupies, yeah, so yeah. we're just ferrying them back and forth yeah. in um, music lessons or concerts they might have. On Saturday, um, I wake up, have breakfast, then I go to my viola lesson, which is at 9 o'clock. Then at 9.30, we drive a little bit to another music school in Croydon for violin, piano, and I walk down a little bit to another music school for French horn. They put in a lot of effort, a lot of work, and when you do that, you know, the end product is, I mean, it's there for everyone to see. I think you can't underestimate how much effort, how much dedication, how much time, how much, you know, you put into all of it. Um, it's very, very, very easy to underestimate it. At first, learning an instrument is hard, but once you start getting um, settled with practice, it gets um, easier and you can always go back to the basics to practice. I have four music teachers, um, one for every instrument. Um, they're all very different, but they have one thing in common. They always teach me how to find the easy way of learning something. I like my lessons. My teachers make the lessons really fun and make me learn as well. We're very, very lucky in the teachers that, um, that they have because they actually encourage you to be there to support them. I stay with them and I sort of take mental notes. In some lessons I record the lessons so I could go over it and see how I could best support their, their practice at home. I feel now is at the age where I'm trying to step back and, and leave her to take ownership of her own, you know, her lessons, her music, her practice. So I'm gradually stepping back and leaving her to take control. But starting with the twins, I sit in on all their music lessons so I can support their practice at home. I think you'd like learn lots of things, like it's just packed into 45 minutes. It's kind of nice and enjoyable because the teachers are really funny as well. So as your child is receiving that musical instruction, so are you. Some teachers are not very keen on you sitting in, but most of them would let me record it. 
and then I look back at what the teacher is saying, and I watch it overnight, and the next morning, while they're practicing in their various rooms, uh, yeah, and they're practicing, you know, whatever it is they're practicing, so I sit in some of their practice, but not all of it, because I really cannot divide myself in three. <laughs> I would, you know, shout out, oh, you missed this bit, or what about this bit, or, you know, shouldn't the dynamic on that bar be that? Shouldn't it be mezzo forte? Shouldn't it be fortissimo? You know, I think it's very, very important that from the starting point, you are seen, starting by the children, as knowing a bit more than they do. Um, so they look up to you. My children actually do not know that, I do not know a lot of things that they know. I don't. And did I mention that I picked up the cello because of Isabella? I did, yeah. So I started learning the cello because Theo and Dora were learning violin. And I didn't want Isabella to feel left, left out. out. So I started taking cello lessons with her. It's very, very important that you support them as best you can in practice, not just plonking them on the piano and telling them, oh, on whatever instrument, and telling them, you know, run with it, go and practice. You create the environment for them, but you also need some level of knowledge um, to be able to support their practice. I mean, my children have totally left me in the dust and all their instruments. Um, I can't keep up, but I have, I have, I feel empowered by their teachers and certainly by my constantly checking up and reading up and listening to music and listening to how things should be to be able to you know guide them in their practice so i think it's that is really key that that's that parental involvement yeah. is really really key to um, producing you know top notch musicians we have such an advantage of just playing music for example it's just like if we hear something on the radio we can just try and play it um, we just play things together, we write some music and we play it together and it's really fun. For classical music I play all the time in orchestras and ensembles. With contemporary music, um, for example, if it's a popular song that people know, I, um, I can play by ear so I'll just listen to it maybe once or twice and I'll try and play it on an instrument. And um, I usually do it with Bella and Dora and we have a great time just jamming on the piano, violin, cello or whatever instrument we're playing on. I think music gives you sort of discipline, if you like. It um, gives, gives you focus, it grounds you, it, it, you learn, there are so many skills you, you pick up from music. There's perseverance, the grounding, you know, the practicing things till you're good at it. And um, the achievement, uh, the, the sense of achievement at the end of it all. And those are transferable skills. You can transfer them to, you know, anything really any in life, any aspect of life. Of life. Yeah. I'll give you a typical example. Theo is going to year seven, and um, last year in September she did the um, scholarship exams for quite a few schools. And in every single school that she applied for, she got the top academic and music scholarship. And this is a girl that plays four musical instruments, plays in four orchestras, but um, but she still managed to pull that out of the bag. Um, it's, a, it's a discipline that yeah. comes with music and music practice. It's, it's second to none. There, there's more to music than just music because um, one, of, well, one of the many things it does do is you get to play with groups, you get to, to work with groups, you get to meet different people. And I think we were talking about it the other day and you know, like the scales for instance, there's a mathematical aspect to that. So it's the different aspects, not just the musical aspect that it de develops. And that's why, you know, we're quite keen, keen to get them interested in that. We've had some down moments. I mean, I think I have, our lowest moment was when my first daughter was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma in 2016. Um, when we got the diagnosis, I was in the hospital with my husband and the first thing I did after having a good cry and being in shock was to leave him in the hospital, drive home and go and practice with my twins because I found practice, practice violin and cello because I found that very, very calming. And therapeutic. It was very in a therapeutic, way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I practiced yeah. with them and then I came back to the hospital armed with Theo's instruments so that she could play on. Even when she was in the hospital, she played all her instruments every day while she was having treatment. She played to children and, you know, and, you know, she inspired children, motivated children. Concerts have been given in her honour because people can't believe that a child that ill just carried on with the music regardless. I mean, she did graded exams and got distinctions in the exams she took while she was having treatment. 
Um, I remember she did, it was about two years ago, she did her grade five piano. Yeah. Um, and she finished the exam and had to go into the hospital for blood transfusion because she was so ill. And she, you know, made top marks and made a distinction in her piano. So she's just, she's just, the music just carries on. We've had down moments, but the music sort of, it sort it of brings us together, binds it binds us, us together, together, keeps yeah. us going. Yeah. And um, music helps you overcome and certainly helped her overcome a lot of the challenges that she faced in the last two years. In the hospital, it just felt like I had nothing left. I couldn't go outside to play because I was hooked up to a medicine machine. And um, there was a lot of pain too. But um, I would listen to music and then when I had the strength to play, I just felt like I was in another world, free from pain. And when I played to other children, it felt like I was giving them a great experience. One of the greatest performances, in my opinion, that Theo gave um, was when she was having treatment. She gave a solo recital of, um, of, of a concerto. She just stood up. She was in a wheelchair. She stood up in a wheelchair and she played her heart out. And um, I had never heard her play. She plays beautifully, even if I say so myself. I had never heard her play like that. She played like she was so masterful. And... Um, she got a standing ovation for that performance. It's to date, that is the, the performance that's most special to me because of what she was going through and how she went, Hodgkin's lymphoma, meh, you know, <laughs> and just played on. I love all the performances I've had and how the audience responds with, um, positively and it just feels really supporting. If you want to, um, if you want to produce a child that is quote unquote gifted uh, musically. It's encouragement, perseverance, practice, practice, practice. Practice is key. I would say that if you make a mistake, just keep on trying and never give up with the instrument you're learning. Don't give up. Always practice. And if you ever feel like giving up, walk away, come back, and try again. It's a very, very, very rewarding journey. If I had to do it all over again, I don't think I'd change a thing. I hope to be an astronaut, but I would also like to um, give performances in space. If you have something that you love, you would invest in it, you would nurture it, you would, you know, you, would, you, you want it to grow, and that's effectively what we've done. And we can see the rewards, we're reaping the rewards. In Japan, the method that we're talking about is actually called the Talent Education Programme because they believe that every child is talented. Just put them in a nurturing environment and they will blossom.